So it's a foggy morning here in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. And I'm at Stowe Lake. It's really calm, so there are a lot of nice reflections. Okay, so here's one possibility. Um, I might try to find a location where the trees are closer though. One of the biggest challenges is finding a spot to actually set up and paint. Uh, because it's sort of, there's like a pathway that goes around the lake. And there's a few little areas where you could set up an easel. So this is typically what you have, just like a little dirt spot. Uh, I could, yeah, I don't have enough room to set up here, but um, there's the view. There's a little bit more room here. I kind of like these trees in the distance. I don't know how I'd crop it. So that's a possibility. As you guys know, I like to paint light and shadow, um, but it's good to find locations that work on a cloudy day um, or overcast day because springtime and summer here is often really foggy. Uh, and I find that painting scenes that have water, you know, like either doing wave paintings or like reflections in a lake um, are good subjects for an overcast day. All right, so I'm thinking of painting these trees and reflections, and then I'll set up right here by this bench. Uh, and there's a boathouse here with coffee and food in case I get hungry. I'm gonna be painting on a 14 by 18 inch panel today. Uh, my usual palette of colors, probably gonna do something like that right there. And I've been using this number 10 uh, natural bristle flat and I think I'm gonna be doing most of the work with this today. All right, so I just did a quick sketch here, and you see there's this, uh, you know, the light spot in the reflection here. I want that to be, I want to make sure that's not like dead center. So, you know, just slightly off to the right actually I think could work. There's a big group of trees here, which is reflected right here. And then on this side, there are these cypress trees, and I want to make sure that these lines too are I mean, even though they're kind of similar, I want to make sure that I accentuate the differences in those and maybe even kind of, you know, alter it to make sure that they're not like mirroring each other. I do like the fact that there's this willow here on this side, um, which is, you know, different from the other side. And then in the distance, I'm going to really use atmospheric perspective to push these trees back. As usual, the burnt sienna will help to get some red or orange into the painting. Okay, and I'm going to use my typical dark mixture to, uh, you know, map out the darks. So alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue, and I'm thinning with liquin and also odorless mineral spirits. And I want to keep this these darks transparent. Um, this is kind of purplish right here. I want actually a little bit more red in there, maybe more, maybe more like that uh, to get those reds to complement all the greens. I've just kind of, you know, lightly scrubbed in the basic shapes and 
you know, so some of this, some of the burnt sienna, some of the alizarin mix here is gonna show through, hopefully. This is like mostly just green and gray. So it'd be nice to have those little uh, complementary pops of color in there. So, you know, basically at this point, I'm just looking for shapes that are interesting. I already see some things that kind of catch my eye. I like this tree here. I need something, I need to break up this line. Uh, I do like the placement of the light. I think that's gonna work. Um, and also the shape of the reflections too. So I'm gonna keep going. All right, so I'm mixing up a warm green. Uh, obviously you can see this is a little bit darker than mid-tone value. Mid-tone value is my palette. Uh, so a warm, dark green uh, for the trees in the distance here. And I wanna keep these sort of transparent as well. And I, like I said, I don't wanna eliminate all of the red color. All right, so for this mixture, I've used ultramarine, cad yellow medium, and a little bit of thalo blue, and, and a bit of titanium white as well. So here is the rough in, and basically I was just working out of the pile of paint that was this color. And then when I wanted more yellow, I mixed yellow in, more blue and purple over here. So I just made alterations to that original pile of paint. Now I can start refining. Uh, like I wanna push these eucalyptus back further. So next I think I'm gonna put the sky in. You know, through the camera here, I can see that the water appears to be bluer or it seems to be cooler and the sky seems warmer, but in real life, it's not that obvious. Um, but I'm gonna go with, uh, you know, sort of a titanium white with ultramarine blue for the water. Probably do something similar to the sky and then maybe warm it up after. Okay, so I made the water just slightly darker in value than the sky. Um, that tends to happen when things are reflected in the water. They tend to be um, closer to a mid-tone, so the lights seem darker and the darks seem lighter. Uh, so now I'm just going to start uh, playing with color and exaggerating the atmospheric perspective to push some of these trees back and try to create some sense of depth. So here's where I am so far. 
and I'm trying to keep you know transparency in these darks uh, so I like what's going on in here I definitely exaggerated the blue in these eucalyptus push those back these trees I think are a little bit too dark um, and red so I'm gonna put some green into those and then touch up the sky uh, and the reflections a little bit so I've mixed up sort of a bluish green kind of dark color here using ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna and a lot of people ask how I paint you know wet over wet so look at how loaded this brush is this is a number 10 uh, flat natural bristle so it's kind of soft and it picks up a lot of paint so you can easily paint over your underpainting uh, but you got to make sure you have enough paint on the brush otherwise you're going to start picking up the color underneath and then load your brush frequently and when you make a mark you know do a, a like a simple mark like that not a lot of brushing like this and see then it's no problem to cover uh, you know to go over existing colors Okay, so it started getting crowded there. People were gathering around to get some lunch, which I'm actually going to do too. There's kind of a little restaurant, uh, so I'm going to grab some food. But we will go back to the studio and take a look at this painting. So you order here, and then you can eat in here if you want, which is kind of cool. Uh, this building was built, I think, in the 1800s. Okay, so it's a vegan wrap, which is like hummus and a bunch of fresh vegetables and a Pellegrino. All right, so I'm not going to make you guys watch me eat this whole thing, but mm. just in case you're in San Francisco and you go to the boathouse at Stowe Lake, let's see how the food is. So here is the finished product. And as you can see, I left some of the um, orange of the burnt sienna showing through. Uh, kind of hard to see, but there is some of the purple left in here as well. One thing that I found is really effective is to keep reflections transparent and have vertical strokes and then, you know, little uh, broken up by um, horizontal strokes here and there. But yeah, I kept it pretty thin. You know, if I don't leave that transparency, it just does not seem, I don't know, the reflections just aren't as convincing. This portion here, while I was outdoors, I thought I made the value too light. Uh, but then I remembered, you know, when I take it home, it's gonna look darker and certainly that is the case. Uh, so I think the value of those trees is actually fine. All right, so this is video upload number 500 for me. So that's kind of a milestone. Uh, anyway, thanks for coming along on the journey. As usual, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, if you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Uh, other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.